Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of y'all and peace out to the rest of you. I probably should have taken on the name black justice or black balance or justice black, something like that. But there's a story as to how I came out as black heart initially and later on black mind. But I won't go into that too much except to say that at the time, it was very important that I offend the pro-white sensibilities of the, rever the regular rank-and-file Arab. The brainwashing, the subconscious nature of it. Because as I've said before, and with no apologies, that is not acceptable from any Muslim, period. Absolutely not. It's actually blasphemous when somebody becomes aware of it and keeps that. That's also another recording for another day, but this does form a background and a context for what I'm about to tell you. Um, Dr. Ronald Neal, shout out to him, said that Dr. Yusuf Salam, peace to him, uh, may Allah preserve him, went to the university where Dr. Ronald Neal teaches and he was talking and giving his story of how he survived um, the false accusations of conviction and the incarceration for that rape in Central Park that he did not commit and his friends did not commit. And he was talking about his story uh, as a testimony to the transformative power of God. And Ronald Neal is rightfully ticked off. He doesn't want to hear any more of this crap in which we use our suffering to glorify God. Like, that's the only way we know to glorify him. Because, see, if you use suffering to glorify him, you're inviting more suffering either from him or from others. Because people have a, a tendency to want to test your faith. Some say God tests your faith, but, see, also, Allah knows when to stop because he knows what you can handle. People don't know what you can handle, and if they did, they would make sure they go over and beyond that to test it. People testing each other's faith is usually something that the devil whispered to them anyway. Test his faith. <laughs> and you think it's your own idea. Black people are not the only ones in the world to do this. And I don't want to hear one of you say that. But we are the ones who tend to do this the most. More so than others. Most colonized and oppressed people tend to do this. But they'll do this when their suffering at the hands of Massa and the Wyatts is brought up to their attention. If we do a little something to them, they don't take that same idea. Then all of a sudden it's, no, we need law and order. And that's why I got on a particular Muslim that you all know, and I got on the back because, you know, I knew she didn't have this mindset when it came to whatever black folks did to her as a kid after 9-11. Uh, she didn't say, well, you know, maybe it's good for me and maybe it's because of something bad that I did and the law was punishing me. And, you know, alhamdulillah, it was probably good for me. She didn't have that attitude. But when, when their colonization is brought up, that's one of the attitudes they take. Well, if we had been better Muslims and worshipers of Allah, they wouldn't have come to punish us. How come it only works for the Europeans? And it don't work when we get a little frustrated with you and give you a taste of your own medicine. Not only her, I'm not even trying to imply that. Again, as I've said, this is something that people in general have been doing when they've been colonized, enslaved, kidnapped, any kind of oppression. But I'm saying we're going to cut that mess out. See, I'm, when I say to black folk, because that's what I'm focusing on, need to stop this mess. I'm not even focusing on just the Muslims. Oh, no, no. The Muslims and the Christians alike had this problem. And it is true that there are things that happen to us as direct and divine consequences for what we've done. But every time Massa and the Wyatts come along and do something oppressive, it is not because of some sin we committed and got away with. It's not it. And it is not okay to use a punishment for something you did not do as your main means of glorifying God because that sends a bad message to others. Dr. Salam, could you please, next time you speak publicly, ask Allah in front of a bunch of people to burn and torment and punish and humiliate your oppressors in this life as an example to others for what they've done. Because see, 
we have this overly patient mentality. It's not serving us well. And I'm going to say this to Muslims and Christians alike. You're not supposed to ask God for patience and pray for patience. You're not supposed to do that. According to Christianity, a pastor told me this years ago before I became Muslim. And after I became Muslim, an imam told several people, not just me, but several people about this. And he pointed to a hadith about it. Now, I'll let y'all look that up. It does mean that patience is bad all the time. But patience, I've learned that patience is like money. The best way to actually have some left is for people to not know you have it because they will use it all up if they know you got it. You ain't gonna have it very long. But while patience is a virtue, it is not a good thing to go and ask God for patience because if he answers your supplication, it's gonna be with affliction. It's like asking him for affliction. Stop this. In the church, stop it. And those of you that are becoming Muslim, we come from the church, as you know, stop bringing this in as well, because the last thing we need is more niglam. Niglam was not revealed. Islam was. If I'm supposed to hold us more accountable and stop with the victim talk, then here's me doing that. See, there are people, and a lot of them are non-whites, there are people who have this relationship with God in which they call on him and turn to him only in proportion to their suffering. So then God does not free them from their suffering. I'm not going to say that God sends all their suffering. Allah does test with ease and hardship, both. And with the medium effort experiences, too. He's balanced. He's fair. He knows what you can handle and he, don't go, he doesn't go beyond that. But as I said, human beings, they don't know when to stop. And if they did, they would make sure they didn't stop at that point. But there are people who have that relationship with Allah in which they only draw near to him through suffering. So he doesn't rescue them from suffering and he doesn't relieve them. Then there are people who actually remember him in times of ease and they show gratitude and they get ease and relief from suffering. I had to learn this. Now, when I was a Christian and I talked about the suffering I was going through at that point, a lot of Christians would say, well, that's your crew. That's your cross, baby. That's your cross. Jesus was on the cross for you. And I'm like, yeah, well, that crucifixion ended too. And at least there was a purpose. Ain't no purpose. This thing ain't helping me. I'm not becoming a better person because I suffered. I'm becoming worse. Do you have a solution for that or not? And, you know, and of course they didn't. And I became Muslim. Some of this bad luck still continued. I asked the Muslims about it. And they would, oh my God, they would actually talk about who Allah is and just talk about what other people that were going through that was worse. And I'm like, yeah, but this is still bad for my faith. And then eventually, um, there was more to it than this, but part of this was that my attention was drawn to people who remembered him in times of ease Maybe even better than they remembered him in times of hardship. So when the hardships came, they were prepared. But they also had a good bit of ease and relief from these hardships. They, they didn't have hardships without help and without end. And I said, let me try this relationship with Allah. Won't he do it? I know that's, that's something they say in the church, but I'm talking about. I'm talking about the creator at this point. Won't he do it? Man, when I tell you that I showed gratitude for ease, in addition to whatever else I learned, and that's another long story, you know what? It came with the ease. And I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, we manosphere. And one of the reasons that we got these nasty relationships between our genders is because a lot of us do take on this notion especially the church system especially the church system and then she brings it into her marriages and her relationships like suffering is the purpose for being alive 
instead of worship. So she becomes her man's crucifixion. Now, I'm not talking about the ones who actually go through it because they pick bad men, but they don't put them in through nothing. Of course, their problem is that they, they, they pick bad men and they don't crucify these bad men. But they get with normal and normal to good guys and become his crucifix. That's why we have this problem. We really want to know the truth. That's the main part of the reason that we got the problems we got. It ain't all, but a lot of it does have to do with that. Sorry about that, but the phone only rings when I'm recording. I kid you not. If if I'd never recorded, the phone would never ring. I'm dead serious. It would never ring if I never recorded. Hold on, y'all. All right, so sorry about the interruption, but I mean, if I never recorded, I would never get a phone call anyway, so there's no way I could have avoided that, and that's that's one of the little remnants of that bad luck, but that's nothing compared to what I've seen before, but I'll tell you this, cut that mess out, put your crucifix down, whether you're Muslim or Christian, put it down, stop glorifying suffering unnecessarily, matter of fact, don't glorify it at all. It's okay that when you've done suffering, you take a lesson from it, fine, but stop glorifying it. Stop acting like it was something you just had to have to, you just had to go through to be who you are today. If you, if you can't be as good a person as you are today without calamities and catastrophes, that is a character flaw. Stop it. Thanks for listening. Black heart, black mind, black out. Asalaamu Alaikum. Oh, and while I'm at it, black balance.